As I remember, Adam, it was upon this fashion bequeathed me by will but pour a thousand crowns, and, as thou sayest, charge my brother on his blessing to breed me well. And there begins my sadness. My brother Jake, he keeps at school, and reports speak scoldingly of his prophet. For my part, he keeps me rustically at home, or, to speak more properly, stays me here at home unkept. For call you that keeping for a gentleman of my birth, that differs not from the stalling of an ox, his horses are bred better, for besides that they are fair with their feeding, they are taught their menage, and to that end the rider is dearly hired, but I, his brother, gain nothing under him but growth, for the which his animals on his dunghills are as much bound to him as I. Besides this, nothing that he so plentifully gives me, the something that nature gave me his countenance, seems to take from me. He lets me feed with his hinds, and bars me the place of a brother, and as as much in him lies. Mine's my gentility with my education. This is it, Adam, that grieves me. And the spirit of my father, which I think is within me, begins to mutiny against this servitude. I will no longer endure it, yet I know no wise remedy on how to avoid it. Yonder comes my master, your brother. Go apart, Adam, and thou shalt hear how he will shake me up. Now, sir, what make you here? Nothing. I am not taught to make anything. What mar you then, sir? Mary, sir, I am helping you to mar that which God had made, a poor unworthy brother of yours with idleness. Mary, sir, be better employed, and be not a while. Shall I keep your hogs and eat husks with them? What prodigal portion have I spent that I should come to such penury? Know you where you are, sir? Oh, sir, very well, here in your orchard. Know you before whom, sir? Aye, better than him I am before knows me. I know you are my eldest brother, and in the dental condition of blood that you should know me. The courtesy of nations allows you my better, in that you are the firstborn. But the same tradition takes not away my blood. There were twenty brothers betwixt us. I have as much of my father in me as you, albeit I confess your coming coming before me is nearer to his reverence. What, boy? Come, come, elder brother, you are too young in this. Would thou lay hands on me, villain? I am no villain. I am the youngest son of Sir Roland de Bois. He was my father, and he is thrice a villain that says such a father begot villains. Were thou not my brother, I would not th take this hand from thy throat till this other had pulled out thy tongue for saying so. Thou hast railed on thyself. Sweet masters, be patient, for your father's remembrance be in accord. Let me go, I say. I will not till I please. You shall hear me. My father charged you in his will to give me good education. You have trained me like a peasant, obscuring and hiding from me all gentlemanlike qualities. The spirit of my father grows in me, and I will no longer endure it. Therefore, allow me such exercises as I may become a gentleman, or give me the poor lottery my father left me by testament. With that I will go by my fortune. And what wilt thou do, beg, when that is spent? Well, sir, get you in. I will not long be troubled with you. You shall have some part of your will. I pray you leave me. I will no further offend you than becomes me for my good. Get you with him, you old dog. Is old dog my reward? Oh, it's true, I have lost teeth in your service. God be with my old master. He would not have spoke such a word. Is it even so? Begin you to go upon me. I will physic your rightness, yet to give no thousand crowns neither. Holla, Dennis. Calls your worship. Was not Charles, the Duke's wrestler, here to speak with me? So please you, he is here at the door, and importunes access to you. Hmm, call him in. To be in a good way, and tomorrow the wrestling is. Good morrow to your worship. Good Monsieur Charles, what's the new news at the new court? There is no new news at court, sir, but the old news. That is, the old duke is banished by his younger brother, the new duke, and three or four loving lords have put themselves into voluntary exile with him, whose lands are revenues enrich the new duke, therefore he can give them good leave to wander. Can you tell if Rosalind, the duke's daughter, be banished with her father? Oh no, for the duke's daughter her cousin loves her, 
being ever from their cradle spread together. She should have followed her exile, or have died to stay behind her. She is at the court, no less beloved by her uncle than his own daughter. Never two ladies loved as they do. Where will the old duke live? They say he lives already in the forest of Arden, and many merry men with him. There they live like old Robin Hood of England. They say many young gentlemen flock to him every day, and fleet the time carelessly, as they did in the Golden World. What, you wrestle tomorrow before the new duke? Mary, I do, sir. I came to acquaint with you on that matter. I am given, sir, secretly to understand that your younger brother, Orlando, hath a disposition to come in a disguise to try to try me for a fall. Tomorrow, sir, I wrestle for my credit, and any that escapes me without some broken limb, I shall acquit him well. Your brother is but young and tender. For your love, I would loathe to foil him, as I must for my own honor if he came in. Therefore, out of my love to you, I came hither to acquaint you withal. With that, either you might stay him from his intendment, or brook such disgrace well as he may run into, and that it is a thing of my own search, and altogether against my will. Charles, I thank thee for thy love to me, which shall, shall find I will most kindly requite. I have myself noticed for my brother's purpose, Arian, and have by underhand means labored to dissuade him from it. But he is resolute, I tell thee, Charles, it is the stubbornest young fellow of France, full of ambition, an envious emulator of every man's good parts, a secret and villainous contriver against me, his natural brother. Therefore, use thy discretion. I had as lief thou didst break his neck as his finger, and thou were best to look to it, for thou dost him any little slight disgrace, or if he do not mightily grace himself on thee, he will practice against thee by poison, and trap thee by some treacherous device, and never leave thee till he hath taken ta ta thy life by some direct means or other. For I assure thee, and almost with tears I speak it, there is not one so young and so villainous this day living. I speak brotherly of him, but I would anatomize him to thee as he is. I was blush and weep. And thou must look pale and wonder. I am heartily glad I came hither to you. If he come tomorrow, and I'll give him his payment. If ever he go alone again, I will wrestle for prize no more. And so, God keep your worship. Farewell, good Charles. Now I will stir this gamester. I hope I shall see an end of him for my soul. Yet I know not why. He is nothing more than he. Yet he is gentle, never schooled, and yet learned. Full of noble device of all sorts, enchantingly beloved, and indeed so much in the heart of the world, and especially of my own people who best know him, that I am altogether misprized. But it shall not be so long. This wrestler shall clear all. Nothing remains but that I kindle the boy thither, which now I'll go about.